One of the things you should understand is that you must be able to employ yourself. You can be employed by another man and the man who employed you, he determines how your day goes. When a man hired you, he tells you what he wants you to do. So we actually do what the people want us to do. We don't do what we want to do. If you are hired by a man, you do what the man wants you to do. So that is why we call it job description. So your job will be described. So before you even get into the job, the job is described. This is so, so, and so you are expected to do. So your job is described before you get part of the job. So the man determines your day, it determines how your week go and how your year goes. To you, you may be working to gather money and start pursuing your own vision or something of your own. But until then, the man owns your day. And when you are being employed, it is not you who is just being employed. It is your mind that is being employed. So as a matter of fact, that is why when it comes to job, they don't employ you based on your size and they don't employ you based on your color, your handsomeness or your beauty. They employ you based on performance. The performance is the performance of the mind, not the performance of the physical man, but the performance of the mind. So it is the mind they will use to employ you. That is why some employment, you need to write exams. And from their exams, you go for an interview. And after the interview, they now determine who they will pick because they know that they are employing the mind. You are only a career of the mind, but the person they are employing is the mind. That is why sometimes you go to a particular company and the CEO is not looking good physically, but the owners of the company, the directors of the company, they are fine with it. The, they don't care about the physical looks of of the CEO. They just want the company to be up and running. So they employ the mind of the individual. Until your mind is employed by you, people will employ your mind. And if people have not employed your mind, the devil will employ you. So you see, you will wake up in a day and you are not able to focus on something. You are wondering in your mind because your mind is not being employed. There is a time of the day that when the mind is not employed or when the mind is not working, the mind cannot rest. Because at that time of the day, even if your body is lying down, it is not time for your mind to lie down. There is also a time of the day the mind must go to rest. So when you understand this thing that there is a time of the day where there is a need for the mind to work, and there is also time of the day where there is a need for the mind to rest. You understand this, you enjoy the activities of your mind. So there are times you put him to work and there are times you do not put him to work. He needs to rest. No company has ever employed a physical person unless it is a company like these companies of where they have to, you know, beauty, something, 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 those stuff. But they employ the mind. Every serious company engage the mind. Every serious company engage the mind. And this is how the devil works too. He, he engages your mind. He will employ your mind. And that is where he will render you useless. So if your day has been useless before, I just want you to know that it was because your mind, it was because your mind was not in a good position. To make profit from your day, it starts from your mind. When it starts from your mind, you will definitely succeed. So if you are unable to focus, it is because you have not given your mind an assignment. When I sleep and wake up, the first thing that comes to my mind is ministry. I've employed the mind fully on God. I sleep and wake up, it is God. I'm about to go to bed, it is God. I wake up, God. I'm going to bed, God. Why? I have employed him and then that is where I have engaged him and that is what he ought to do. And that is how it is. Now, you need to understand, when we come to the realm of the spirit, most of us, no impartation is able to help us because our mind is not in a position to receive. The gate between the spirit realm and the physical realm is the mind. So you can easily enter the realm of the spirit if you are able to deal with the mind. If you are able to work on that thing called the mind. I have tried to have access to the realm of the spirit some days and failed. Enter the spirit realm and I couldn't. I tried and tried and I tried and I couldn't. For once, I thought that I've committed a sin only to discover that it was not a sin. It was the mind. It was the mind. And many people who are here and they are unable to have access to God's realm. You've not committed any sin. The issue is just the mind. You are so much clouded with things and the devil have told you so many things that you actually thought they are true, but it's not true. So when he wants to defeat you, he starts with your mind. Knowing that from that place, he can easily easily brings you down. The devil fights and defeats you from your mind. So the greatest battle do not take place in the physical. It takes place in the mind. 
So when you see a man defeated in the physical, that man has already been defeated in the mind. The Bible says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God. To the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imagination, and everything that exalts itself above the knowledge of God. So the real war actually takes place in the mind. Even the spiritual battles takes place in the mind. Now, so there are many people here, you are going through things spiritually, but actually is tasked from the mind. If we are able to take the mind, the wandering mind, if we are able to take the unfocused mind, the restless mind, the frustrated mind, and then we take that away, we can help to access so many deep things in the realm of the spirit. The Bible says, be still and know that I am God. Be still, be still. The word still is talking about a resting point where the mind can find rest. And from that place, the mind finds rest. It is the only place you begin to discover the power of God. That is the realm and then the point where you begin to see the manifestation of the divine nature of God. So the word be still is talking about to rest your mind. And when the mind is rested, you are now at a point where you can access the spirit realm all of a sudden. Be still and know that I am God. When the Bible says be still, it's not talking about sitting down, but it's talking about your ability to find a resting place for your mind. Be still. Be still and know that I am God. So when you are still, you see him. When you are still, you know him. When you are still, you see his manifestation. The mind has to be still. People fornicate from the mind. Any man you see fornicating in the physical started it from the mind. Any man you see succeeding in the physical started it from the mind. So the mind is an incubator. It incubates both good and bad. The mind is a manufacturer. It can manufacture your destiny. The mind can develop anything. The mind can create anything. Remove the mind of a person and the person becomes useless. So, sir, check yourself. If you don't like your results, then you may have to visit the mind if you don't like the results. If you are wondering, just know that the mind was not employed and the devil employed him. It happens. When the mind is not employed, the devil, of course, will employ him. That is it. The mind.